subtotal reconstituting cholecystectomies in which an intact lumen is reconstructed have approximately 20% risk in recurrence of biliary events. Recurrence can require interventions ranging from ERCP to completion cholecystectomy. Management of large gallstones can be achieved endoscopically via mechanical lithotripsy, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, and laser lithotripsy. Laser lithotripsy offers the advantage of precise targeting, reducing the potential for common bile duct injury. Here we describe a case report of percutaneous cholecystolithotomy with laser lithotripsy for retaining gallstone extraction. The patient is a previously healthy 47-year-old male who underwent a laparoscopic subtotal cholecystectomy at a referring facility for severe cholecystitis. His postoperative course was complicated by abscess formation in the gallbladder fossa requiring a percutaneous drain. He was found to have a persistent cystic duct leak requiring ERCP with stent placement. Repeat imaging demonstrated retained stones in the remaining gallbladder and in the cystic duct. The percutaneous drain was then exchanged for an external biliary stent. Despite this, the patient had increased drainage of one liter of bile per day from the stent and failed subsequent clamp trials of the drain. The patient presented to our clinic for discussion of surgical removal of stones. After further discussion, we decided to try an endoscopic intervention first. We proceeded with percutaneous endoscopy via the drain tract. The drain was then accessed with a wire until a loop was formed in the duodenum, and the drain was removed. Over the wire, we advanced an Olympus UFV ultra-slim uridoscope into the drain tract. We identified a 2-3 to three centimeter remaining gallbladder containing a single 2 centimeter gallstone, contrary to the CT findings. The stone was mobile, and we were able to navigate our scope down through the cystic duct into the common bile duct. Within the common bile duct, there was a single patent biliary stent and patent sphincterotomy. The ureter scope was brought to the level of the stone, and we attempted to use a biliary basket to retrieve the stone, however the stone was too large. We then attempted mechanical lithotripsy with a lithotriptor basket advanced through the drain tract parallel to the ureteroscope under fluoroscopic guidance. However, the remnant gallbladder was too small to permit the basket to be completely open, rendering mechanical lithotripsy impossible. The procedure was terminated at this time, and a biliary drain was replaced over a wire. After collaboration with an institutional urologist, we elected to apply laser lithotripsy one week later. Once again, a flexible ureteroscope was advanced down the drain tract into the gallbladder in situ. The stent at this time was noted to be filled with debris, and the solitary gallstone in the gallbladder fossa was identified. Laser lithotripsy was then performed. A homian laser using a 275 micron fiber was used. The stone fragments were then removed using multiple different stone extraction baskets. Numerous rounds of laser lithotripsy and basket retrieval were performed until the size of the stone had significantly decreased. At this point, several fragmented stones had migrated into the common bile duct. We then performed ERCP. The patient's biliary stent was clogged with debris and was removed. Multiple balloon sweeps were performed. There was a large amount of biliary debris that was cleared from the biliary tree, including small fragments of stones. A 10 French biliary stent was placed under standard fluoroscopic and endoscopic guidance. A cholangiogram demonstrated a clear common bile duct and filling of the remnant gallbladder. A cholecystostomy tube was left in the remnant gallbladder. Immediately after the procedure, the patient reported that his pain had resolved. A repeat cholangiogram two weeks later demonstrated no evidence of gallstones or cholidocolithiasis, and the biliary stent was noted to have already fallen out. The patient reported that he continued to feel dramatically better without pain or drainage from his strain site. 
The cholecystostomy tube was removed in clinic. This video highlights several key points. First, management of a large retained gallstone is technically possible with laser lithotripsy. More research is needed for long-term clinical outcomes in patients who receive this therapy. Next, percutaneous biliary interventions avoid the morbidity of redo cholecystectomy. Prior research has demonstrated high rates of conversion to open and common bile duct injuries during redo cholecystectomies. Finally, this case illustrates the improved patient outcomes that can be achieved using a multidisciplinary approach to patient care. With the skills of a urologist trained in laser lithotripsy and a surgeon trained in ERCP, the biliary tree was able to be scoped in two directions during the same case. In summary, this is a 47-year-old male with a history of subtotal cholecystectomy for severe cholecystitis, complicated by retained gallstone and persistent bile leak, successfully managed percutaneously with laser lithotripsy.